Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. That hope is one of those four deadly emotions uh, that we talk about where, you know, it, it really can cost you a lot of money if you're, if you're hoping on a trade and you're not just following a, a, a method or a system. You, you lose your objectivity. You're, you're going to have problems in trading, and that's where we don't want that. We want you to have a really clear system. Here's another prior example with the dollar against the euro. So you can see the dollar was sliding against the euro, the EUI, back here, uh, you can see several different points, some beautiful points along the way there from on the September through November decline. This is an example where, remember, we showed you before how September to early November was uh, an example where I think it was CDD was weak. Well, the euro stayed weak even on this retest back here in uh, early November. That was a great low risk entry for another snap back down. You can see you got it. Um, of course, you know if it tests up above that line. And then it takes you out of the trade, like that one did the very next day. You got to say goodbye to the trade. So you take small losses compared to bigger gains. We can see on this chart that we had had a situation in which we were getting uh, back at the start of uh, 08, late February actually, that we'd gotten the setup. And then we got the confirmation. So that's our first sell point happening on EUI. And then we were getting a retest kicking in right here, right up into this uh, level here, about 65. Uh, remember what we said before, they trade in half-point increments. So if you've got the dollar against the euro at 65, that would be a case we'd have like a 65 uh, put, a 65 and a half put, a 66 put, et cetera, where you could be considering um, a possible put play into that type of a situation. Um, Sandro says, if you see a breakout above the bands, or even below for that matter, what type of options would you usually buy, like two months or less? That's uh, a good question. Um, you know, usually I'd say two months is about my proper window, about six to eight weeks out on a daily chart. So again, it goes back to your time frame. If you're trading a 15-minute chart or a 60-minute chart, you might be able to get away with a three or four-week option. Um, if you're trading a little uh, longer term, usually you're going to put yourself in a position in which you can say, okay, um, we want to. Uh, you know, watch a uh, little bit of a longer-term option at that point if that happens. So that's that's it's all the key. You've got to just know what you're looking for um, based on your time frames. Um, also, you've probably seen this chart: a percentage gain to break even after a loss. This shows you why it's so critical to keep your losses down, because you know just based on the power of compounding that you know if you take say a 50% loss. Say you take a hundred thousand dollar trading account down to fifty thousand dollars for your average person, perhaps. So basically, you might say, "Well, okay, I only lost fifty thousand. I can make that back up." Well, I've got to make fifty thousand back up, but now I've got a lower base of fifty thousand to start from. Now, so that's actually for a fifty percent loss, requiring a double, a hundred percent gain to get back to even. So from that perspective, uh, you know, that's not very attractive to see that slip away. Now, why not just use a 10% stop loss on an option? Well, because a lot of times you might see the option that's uh, bid to, offered 220, it might have a 10% bid-ask spread right away. So you've got to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. We tend to use something using the 25 to 30% range uh, for a slightly in-the-money type of a situation as a general rule of thumb. So, you know, these are all things you can consider. Um, and so, uh, let's see, uh, looking at some other questions here, um, make sure we've answered all of them. Um, all of asked the question says she understands that Forex shares are sold in many lots and that uh, many lots are 10,000 shares. She says, is that the minimum buy, or how does that work with options? Uh, are they 1 equals 100 shares? Um, it's a good question, actually. Usually, it's uh, every option is tied to 100 shares, but uh, I may have Steve come back and help us with those details in a little bit because that's uh, I just usually I'm just trading the the option and not worrying so much about these other lots. But it's most situations it's uh, it's uh, it's tied to the the this typical 100 share lots. But Steve may Price have some. That's other exactly the way it is here. 
I think the one question is that we get is that uh, what's the notional value? And this yeah. is an, an option on the exchange rate itself. So if you're looking at dollar yen, uh, it's really worth whatever the number is, 88 times 100. Or if you're looking at dollar Australian, it's uh, 140 times 100. So that same 100 applies here. So you're controlling 100 times that number. So it's exactly like you thought. Perfect. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure. I knew you'd know the details better than I would on that because it's uh, you want to make sure that, yeah, you do know what, what you're controlling. And, again, that just further reinforces, as Steve said, the power of, you know, uh, if you're looking at 88 times 100, 8,800 uh, dollars for example well you know that you can start to see the power of the of what you're controlling with the option so uh, another technique I use that a lot of people find kind of interesting because not many people advocate it <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really worked well for me it's something I call the closing stop and this means that whatever time frame you trade most of the technical indicators that I'm showing you here tonight are indicators that are based on uh, you know typically uh, uh, closes you know so if I don't know what the close is going to be today why should I be reacting to the intraday noise and potentially whipsawing myself out you know the bottom line is that uh, we're really looking for a situation in which um, you know we want to let it tell us at the close if we were truly getting an exit signal or if it was just an intraday fake out on some of the noise that you see I think that that's our greatest challenge and our greatest enemy as a trend trader is noise. We've got to try to find ways to minimize that noise from shaking us out of trades. I'm sure you've all had that happen at some time or another where you've gotten shaken out of a trade that would have been a big winner for you if you just hadn't been whipsawed out intraday. And so for me, this uh, on a daily chart, this closing stop has saved me a lot of whipsaws. It just requires a little bit more work to implement in the last usually 15 minutes of the day for a, for a daily chart. So for a daily chart, if I'm saying closing stop below a certain level, I say look at the price 15 minutes before the end of the day on a daily chart, and if that if that level has been violated at that point, then I'd typically tell my customers just uh, to place a market order to get out of the position, or you could place a limit order with a little bit of room, say just below the bid, to get out. Because at that point you want to say uncle that it's not holding like you would hope by the end of the day, versus if you overreact earlier in the day and then it flips and reverses and you've had an intraday stop in place, you're knocked out of the trade at a loss the trade's going on to be a winner you're doubly frustrated so we want to avoid that frustration as much as we can and say let's just follow rules um, like the closing stop rule um, so that's helped me avoid a lot of the noise in the markets um, here's a here's a prior example with the british pound a dollar against british pound i should say and so you can see another great example where you're getting um, this real clear breakout on the percent R, and we've gotten the breakout outside of the acceleration bands. Two days later, it just closes above that high. That's full confirmation in my world. And then you see we test right down, right into the overbought threshold. You can see that's a very key level right there. Notice for two days after that, we, we test underneath it during the day, but the closing stop approach keeps us with the trade um, because it flips back up. Those are green candles. It tells you that it traded below there during the day there in late 07, uh, December, late December of 07, right as the 2008 year kicked off. But that was a great low-risk entry point, and it's a place where if you're already in the trade, you can tighten your stop to say your closing stop is now uh, just above 50 there, right right into that low that you saw there in late 07. Now, when does this get violated and officially gets exited? You can see that happens once we get our next little stop set up here, and it's violated the very next day got to get out when you see that violation that very next day. Then it went into a very choppy phase, and then it did pick up a little downtrend that you saw in the late Feb, early March period when we started to set up there, and then we broke down uh, on the fifth day for a little downtrend. And then that retest actually was taken out. Um, you can see that that retest was violated. Here's an example where it was, it was profitable for about four days, and then by the time of the closeout, it would become unprofitable after about the fourth or fifth day. And that's a situation where, again, if you can scale out a part of your profit, great. If you can't, fine. You just have to take the loss and move on. Either way, you should be out of that trade at that point and looking for uh, the next. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.